Good morning and welcome to worship here at First Congregational United Church of Christ. It is a beautiful morning and we give thanks and rejoice for this day which God has made. And uh, as the flowers bloom and as the trees bloom, we give thanks for the beauty around us. And uh, if you're like me, even through the seasonal allergies, we give thanks for a new day today. We, we uh, celebrate many things this morning, including confirmation. We have four young confirmands that will be affirming their faith today. And I'm also, uh, it is a joy to introduce to you my colleague and your new senior pastor, Reverend Martel Spaniolo. Again, welcome to worship today. Welcome all families who are here surrounding your confirmand this day as well. There are uh, many joys which we celebrate today, including uh, two celebrations uh, with the flowers that are here on the altar and, and on the front table. We celebrate the 50th wedding anniversary of Larry and Suzanne Fuller. In the back here, <laughs> congratulations. And we also celebrate with Birgit and Kelly Hoover and their family as they have adopted Michael Morrow Hoover. And we celebrate the addition to your family. <laughs> You'll notice many other ways in which we celebrate this coming week and ways in which you can join with us in the life of our church. Take a look at the bulletin and take that home with you. Uh, and, and you can uh, join with us in, in many different ways. We celebrate communion today, and our practice here is to remain seated where we are. We pass trays back and forth, first of bread and then of cups of juice, and we serve one another from where we are seated. We invite you, as you do so, to take the bread and receive that uh, as you receive it, to eat it, uh, as a reminder of God's love for each of us individually. And then as you receive the cup, we invite you to hold that and wait, and we will drink together as a sign of God's love for the whole world and as a sign of the unity of the body of Christ. We, we do have gluten-free bread. If you need that, let a communion server know, and we can get that to you as well this morning. Are there any other announcements I might be missing this morning, this moment? Okay. Uh, we do invite you to stick around after the service to uh, celebrate. There, there's still more cake to celebrate with uh, Martel for his first Sunday with us, so join with us in uh, Jones Hall, uh, excuse me, this one, Fick Memorial Hall on this floor as you depart from worship today. Let us continue in worship, turn to one another, welcome each other with the sign of God's love and grace today.
us join together now in our gathering words. Welcome to God's new day. Everywhere we look, we see new life. In the beauty that surrounds us, our opportunities help us to recognize them. Opportunities to help, to comfort, and to share. Help us to respond to them. Opportunities to be God's hands, reflecting God's love in our lives. We are the church, as living images of our Creator, bound together in fellowship and service. Our very lives become acts of praise. Let us worship together. You may be seated. As we prepare to hear God's word in our scriptures today, I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, you show us your care and so much of life around us. You invite us into your great life of love, but often we refuse your invitation and turn away from your call. Instead of asking you for help when you need it, we rely on our own stubborn wills Instead of knocking at the doors of your people, we shut up our lives and hide from one another. Instead of seeking you in the faces of our sisters and brothers, we pretend not to see the need around us. Deliver us, great God. Show us the new life that gives us the courage to live in peace and grace. I invite you to take a moment of silence. Let us each offer our personal confessions to God. Friends, let us hear and receive this good news today, that God, our Redeemer, abides with you this day. God, our Redeemer, forgives your sins, leads you into paths of righteousness, and restores your very life. Let us receive that good news and live into new life this day. Amen. Scripture reading is Psalm 23. I jumped ahead, excuse me. Psalm 23, we will read together responsively. So I would invite you to join with me in our scripture reading. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord, my whole life. Thank you. 
Gospel according to John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We as Christians are very familiar with the idea of Jesus being the Good Shepherd. You close your eyes and you can imagine a man with long hair and a beard wearing a long garment with a sheep, or a, yes, a sheep across his shoulders. Familiar with it? Everyone? Everyone? Good. That's not what we're talking about today. Put that out of your mind. Take it away. Good luck with that, right? So, I'm going to start first with the understanding of what's going on in Psalm 23. The psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We're very familiar with that psalm. It's a go-to psalm. We've heard it at every single funeral that we ever attended, ever, ever, amen. And we tend to pull that out of context. But that is the go-to psalm. It's one of the original Hebrew psalms that we can actually date nearly a thousand years before Christ. And in that psalm, what, what the psalmist is saying is that God is like this huge, well, not huge, not God's huge, but that God is like a rancher or a shepherd with a, an abundance of wealth. And the psalmist who is writing this is fleeing, is fleeing from something horrible, is fleeing from something, something treacherous, and finds solace and warmth and safety with the shepherd. The shepherd is like a sheep, and you're invited into the tent, and the water and wine are flowing abundantly, and the food is in abundance, but it's in this protected care of a sheep, or a shepherd, or a rancher. It's about holding in and protecting. It's about being parental. The child falls, scrapes the knee, and comes running to mommy or daddy, and the parent hugs and caresses and comforts. That is the idea of the first text. The Lord is my shepherd. When I'm running away, there's some place to hide. When I'm fleeing horrible things, there's someone to comfort me and hold me close. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, in our next text, this text of John, Jesus is taking us from that to something else, something different. Something more evolved. He's not allowing us to stay in the Lord is my shepherd mentality. He's doing something more. 
So, in the Gospel text by John, Jesus is actually talking about not himself as shepherd. At least not yet. That comes later on in the chapter. Do we remember what Jesus called himself in today's text? I am. He says it twice. I am the gate. I am the gate. Okay. We're going to just back up a little bit in the Gospel of John. Because the way John works in all of his Gospels is this. Jesus does an action. And then there's a dialogue between Jesus and a bunch of people. The Pharisees, the crowd. And then there's a discourse. The explanation. And so where we are today in his Gospel is in the ex explanation part of the story. The story actually started last chapter in John 9, where Jesus cures the blind man. Today's story is the discourse about the blind man. And we can't just pick it up and pluck it out and say, oh, this is what Jesus is talking about, because it's not about Jesus as gate and shepherd apart from what happens with the blind man. And what Jesus does with the blind man is there's this man born blind. Jesus takes mud, puts it on his eyes, and spit, or dirt, and goes, tells him to go wash off. And this man who's been born blind can now see. What Jesus offers this blind man is salvation. Salvation. Salvation to see. Salvation to embrace the light. Salvation to be part of the community. He's no longer an outsider. He's no longer a beggar. He's no longer stuck believing that he is a sinful person because he was born blind. And furthermore, his parents are no longer considered sinful either because in the time of Christ, when someone had something wrong with them, it was often blamed on the parents. Don't blame your parents. It's not their fault. Remember that. Got it? So, so there was this action, and then there was this dialogue about what happened. And now is the understanding of what's going on. So what Jesus is doing is he's saying that this man had an idea of who God was and who the church is. And now allow me to explain who I am and what that means to you. The shepherd calls, and I am the gate. I am the gate. Now, in the time of Christ, when you had a flock of sheep, what you would do is often bring them back at nighttime to a cave. And you and several other shepherds would co-mingle your sheep in a cave. And then there was someone that was hired, literally, to stand there as the gatekeeper to make sure that no one came into the cave. No one. Nothing. And the cave was a sense of protection. A sense of Psalm 23. That sense of protection and warmth and hug. The place where no one can get you. The place where you are comforted and guarded. A place of safety and surety. But Jesus wants us to think differently. Jesus wants us to be called out into the pasture. So what is literally going on in this text is this. Jesus is your best friend calling you out to the field to have a catch a ball. Jesus is your best friend who is calling you out to fly a kite. Jesus is calling you out of that dark, protective space into the open fields to run barefoot in the grass. Jesus is the voice of the girlfriend or boyfriend that calls you to walk barefoot on the sand, hand in hand. It's no longer about protection. It's now about experiencing life in abundance. It's about going forth from the dark, protective cave into something that's brighter and more beautiful. He promises us life in abundance, in the light, in the fresh air, in the sunshine. And we often, as Christians, want to go into our protective shell of a church where we all agree, where everything is cool and comfortable. 
And the voice of the shepherd is calling us through Jesus Christ, through life, his life, death, and resurrection, into the pasture of light and beauty and spring and hope. This is a text that doesn't allow us to stay comfortable anymore. Now it's about living life abundantly. Yes, church still is that place of comfort and surety and security. And there is a place for that. But it's not where we stay. We live through the life of Christ. We go through that gate. And we share the message of Jesus by living fully and abundantly in the here and now. The beauty of this text is, it, is that it is written in the present and not in the future. The beauty of this text is that it's about life in the here and now in its abundance. And not to be so afraid that we have to run away from the rest of the world and hide. But we're called forth to live. And live like Christ taught us to live. To feed the hungry. To clothe the naked. To visit the imprisoned. To share what we have with the good of others. To see others as God sees them. And to invite them to fly the kite or throw the ball or play frisbee in life, out in the sun. That's what this text is about. It's about living fully, and living well, and living abundantly, and living in beauty. Now, compromise. This is about you, too. And the church does the same thing with the order of confirmation. In the beginning, it was about the confirmation of the Holy Spirit. And that was done with a prayer form. You know what it is. The word is epiclesis. What's epiclesis mean? <coughs> Go ahead. You've got it. She knows. She knows her Greek. Good job. It's about invoking the Holy Spirit. So the beginning of confirmation in its roots was about calling down the Holy Spirit upon you. But that's not good enough. It's correct. But it's not good enough. And then what happens after that is that it was about being confirmed by the church. All the people around you and the hierarchy are supposed to say, yeah, they are part of the church now. But that's not good enough either for Jesus. What happens now is that you are confirming your faith so that we may all grow with you. Yes, the Holy Spirit is called upon you. So yes, God is in action. Yes, the church is surrounding you and protecting you like that cave. But now you're calling us forth to go out to the sun. You, in standing up before us today, are calling all of us to go out into the sun and live life abundantly. The word for that in Latin, or the term is teleos perfectio, which means perfection. You're drawing us to perfection by not no longer staying cocooned in a church, but following your voice through the gate of Jesus Christ into the light of day. And for that, we thank you. And the church thanks you. Congratulations on leading us out from the cocoon of church to the light of day and accepting the call of Jesus and the call of the Spirit. God bless.
You may be seated. We come now to a time in which we offer our prayers for one another, for the community, and for the world around us. And I would invite you to take a moment to look at page 8 of our bulletin. On page 8, you'll see uh, names that are in bold print there, newest updates to our prayer list. We invite your prayers for the family and friends of Dwayne Winter. Dwayne died on Thursday, and we're preparing for his funeral, which will be here tom uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. There's also a visitation with uh, gathering with the family this evening, 5 to 7 p.m. at Miller Funeral Home here downtown. We invite you to come and celebrate his life with us tomorrow morning. And if you are able, we are also looking for a few more volunteers to help out with the, uh, uh, with the setup and the cleanup for the meal, which will be downstairs in Jones Hall. So if you're available, I would invite you to speak with me or with uh, Chris Laughlin if you are able to volunteer tomorrow. We thank you for that. We also invite your prayers for the family and friends of Jean Swedeen, uh, John Swedeen's mother who passed away this last week. We also invite your prayers for Lori Hinckley who has been hospitalized uh, for over a week now and is uh, continuing to seek uh, care and treatment for cancer. For Dean Berg who's also undergoing cancer treatment and for Gretchen Zlotti who is hospitalized this past week. We also add this morning uh, Alan Hamburger's mother, uh, excuse me, Alan's mother, Irene, who, uh, who they've called the family to be with her this morning. So invite your prayers for Alan and for Alan's mother and the whole family at this time. <clears throat> Are there any others you would like to add to our list today and to name aloud? Okay, then at this time, I would invite you to join with me in a time of prayer. Let us begin with silence. Let us be open and attentive to God's abundant spirit here in this place as we pray. God, our shepherd, we give thanks that you call us to abundant life in here and now. We pray that you would lead us into that new life here today and in our days ahead. We look to you, O God, to guide us in the ways of peace. We long for that day when violence will come to an end, when all wars and suffering will cease. Help us, your church, to discern the times and places where we are to act and where we are to wait in patience. Open us to your spirit this day. Bring us clarity of your vision so that we might genuinely act as your hands in the world. Be with our leaders both near and far away, that they may be wise and compassionate in the face of hard decisions. Bless them in their service to all of your beloved children around the world. God of grace, surround all who are suffering or feeling broken all who are feeling downhearted, tired, sick, or empty. For those who are without home, and for all who live day to day struggling to have enough food on the table, we pray. For all who are feeling the emptiness of loss, or the possibility of it, we pray. We hold on our hearts many names of those nearest to our lives and our congregation. Today we remember especially Alan Hamburger and his mother Irene, the family and friends of Jean Swedeen, Lori Hinckley, Dean Berg, Gretchen Zlotti, and the family and friends of Dwayne Winter. God, we thank you today for the many gifts of our youth church members. We often look ahead to what they might become as they fulfill their potential in adulthood. But we are grateful for our youth today, for the gifts they offer to us now as full members of this church calling us into abundant life and into this unique chapter of their lives. God, our teacher, we thank you for your presence with our confirmands up to this point in their lives, and we know you will always be with them. We now ask that you would show up in their lives in ways that surprise them and fill them with faith and hope. We thank you for your spirit moving through many caring people in the church who have nurtured them up to this turning point in their faith lives. Bless them 
with supportive mentors and teachers in years to come. God of all life, shepherd us into this new day and into the abundant future you have set before us. We offer all that we are with hope that your peaceable realm will one day be a reality in our world. We pray this in the name of Christ, who taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. At this time, we respond with our gifts and our offerings, responding to that call to abundant life, which God has provided for us. We invite you to do so by considering a gift through the uh, envelopes that are found in your pew racks, as well as through the God's Hands cards, the green uh, colored cards that you received this morning. Another way to offer your prayers and your service and your presence throughout the coming week. We invite you to bring those gifts forward to the basket that will be at the chancel here at the, in just a moment. And if you wish to, you can remain seated and an usher will come to you. Our practice is to bring our gifts forward through the middle aisle and then to continue out through the side aisles. So as uh, you are dispersing, uh, to move outward to the side aisles and then back up the front to offer your gift. Let us give joyfully and generously today, offering these gifts toward abundant living.
Let us join together now in dedicating these gifts and offerings as we pray. Generous giver, we return to you through the ministry and outreach of this church, a portion of all you have entrusted to us. Bless each gift and multiply the good to be done through our time, talents, and treasure. Amen. You may be seated. I would invite you to join with us in singing the refrain of the song, Dream God's Dream. If you know it, sing loudly, and as you go along, if this is new to you, join as it becomes familiar to you. Dream God's Dream. Dream God's Dream. Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough the world will change when we dream god's dream i'm dreaming of a world where the color of one's skin will mean less than what's within the person's heart. A world where water's clean and where air is safe to breathe and every child born has enough to God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. I'm dreaming of the call God is offering to me How to use my energies and my best gifts To do the work of Christ To say, God, please use my life To spread your healing love And to live your truth God's dream, Holy Spirit, help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough. The world will change when we dream God's dream. picked up the verse, sing with us now. Verse 3. I'm dreaming of the way that I want my life to go. I've got hope and I've got goals I'd like to meet. I'm reaching for the stars, but I won't forget the scars of Christ who died to show that the dreams for all dream God's dream Holy Spirit help us dream of a world where there is justice and where everyone is free to build and grow and love and to simply have enough, the world will change when we dream God's dream. 
we come now to a time of confirmation. So today, I invite all those confirmands who are ready to confirm their faith to come forward. Today, you also confirm your baptism, a promise which your parents and sponsors made on your behalf earlier in life, and a blessing which the church made at that time. So as you come forward, I invite you first to pause at the baptismal font here as a reminder of your baptism and mark your forehead with water, with the sign of the cross. I invite your parents or guardians or sponsors, all who are here to surround you today, to also do the same, offer that blessing of the baptismal waters. So at this time, each of you come forward. And the parents, sponsors, at this time, I would invite siblings to join as well. You are welcome to surround and offer your blessing today. So we have Addison Nusma up here first. There we go. Perfect. Just offer a blessing to your sister. That's what we're Okay. Come on up here, Blaze, we'll have you right up here. So we have Addison Nusma, Blaze Lubers, also Matthew Ostaby. Okay. And Carter Christopher Bell. We also recognize today that faith journeys of all our young disciples in the church are shaped by many teachers and mentors along the way. So we have invited our Christian Education Director, Becky Pagoni, forward, and she represents the church's teaching ministry in their lives. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These young people have found nurture and support in the midst of this church's family. Through study and prayer, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to confirm their baptisms and to claim with us a relationship with Christ and the members of the church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Spirit has given them. Hear these words of Jesus. I am the vine and, the, and you are the branches. All those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Confirmands, do you desire to affirm your baptism in the faith and community of Jesus Christ? Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise, with God's grace, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a devoted member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? Let us all unite with the Church in all times and places in affirming our faith in God, 
Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Candidates, I invite you to join in prayer as we pray. God, my Creator, Amen. And let all of us offer a prayer together. Let us pray. Living God, in baptism, you welcome us, all the church, as your servants. You forgive our sins and promise us eternal life. Today we promise our support for these confirmands to offer our love and nurture, our care and compassion, no matter what life throws their way. Gracious God, may the gifts of your Holy Spirit be made real in them, May they continue to discover love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in trying times, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things. Guide them and strengthen them for ministry in the world. Through Jesus Christ, amen. we offer, yes, please kneel, and we will surround you, family and all, surround you as we offer a prayer together. O oh God, strengthen your servant Addison Nicole with your grace, that she may continue in faithfulness on her journey. Nurture in her your spirit until that day when she returns in wholeness to you. Amen. O oh God, strengthen your servant Blaise Darren with your grace, that he may continue in faithfulness on his journey. Nurture in him your spirit until that day when he returns in wholeness to you. Amen. O oh God, strengthen your servant Matthew Lloyd with your grace that he may continue in faithfulness on his journey. Nurture in him your spirit until that day when he returns in wholeness to you. Amen. O oh God, strengthen your servant Carter Christopher with your grace, that he may continue in faithfulness on his journey Nurture in him your spirit until that day when he returns in wholeness to you. Amen. Let us pray. We rejoice, O merciful God, with these confirmands in the gift of the Holy Spirit and in the Spirit's power to awaken us to new truths and to inspire us to venture into fullness of life. We give you thanks that these individuals have been moved to affirm their baptisms. Help them to live not for themselves alone, but for God and all of God's people. Give them the strength to persevere, abounding in hope, never giving up, pressing toward the hope you hold for their lives. In Christ we pray. Amen. By your baptism, you were made one with the body of Christ, the church. Today we rejoice in your journey of faith which has brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in this community of faith. We invite you to turn to the congregation before you, and parents, you are invited to uh, be seated at this time. Thank you. Now, let us the members of First Congregational Church express our welcome and affirm our mutual life together in Christ. We welcome you with joy. We surround you with the love that strengthens us all. We invite you into the love and labor of this congregation, of the United Church of Christ, and of the whole church. May we challenge and love each other. 
May we follow together in the pathways known or yet to be discovered. May we all be witnesses of the love shown by Jesus Christ. Welcome, new members of this body. We offer this greeting to you in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of First, Con First Congregational Church. We welcome you with joy and love. And let us pray together. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Come to this table, for God is revealed here. For in this place, God's promise is made known to us all. For at this table, God's presence is made real among us, offering food and refreshment for our journey, food to nourish us on the way we are called to go, refreshment to revive us when we long to turn back. For here, God offers us the bread of life, the nourishment we need, the reminder that the presence of the Holy lives deep within our being, giving us all that we need to become the people we are created to be, 
giving us the affirmation to live fully and to love generously. So come, for God longs to meet us here and feed us for our journey. In the beginning, the word called creation into being. Darkness was called to see light. Light was called to know darkness. Chaos was called in order to order. Order was to acknowledge chaos. Life was called to live in the face of death. Death was called to the reality of life. And deep in the heart of creation lay the life of creation, a deep yearning, calling all to live fully and love generously. And all this expressed uniquely in the life of one man, in whom the holiness of the Creator and the potential of the creation meet, expressing completely what it was to live fully and to love generously. At this table, we meet to remember one night of his life, the last night of his life, in which he was betrayed and handed over to the hands of human hatred and human cruelty. And we remember how, on that night, he shared a meal with those closest to him. As they ate, he took some of the bread and a prayer of thanks and broke it, saying, This bread is broken as my body will be. And he handed, to them, handed it to them and invited them to eat, saying, Remember all that I have been for you. As often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And then later he poured wine into the cup. And taking the cup, said a prayer of thanks and offered it to them, saying, This cup is poured out for you. My life has been poured out. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus' body was broken and his life was taken by hands corrupted by power, but his presence was not gone. For after his death, he was made known among them. And the power of his life lives on today in those who seek to follow him. To them is given the power of his spirit, given strength and wisdom that they too may live fully and love generously. So eat this bread and share this cup and remember the one who gave himself that we might know the true meaning of love. Drink this cup and give thanks for the one who did not stop loving and calls us to follow. We pray that by the power of the holy and life-giving spirit, this bread and cup here may be transformed into signs of the life of Jesus given for us, offering us all we need to sustain us on our journey. Amen. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. For all is now ready.
This is the cup of salvation. Let us drink together. And let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, unite us in the bonds, transformation and hope. Amen. Friends, as we go from this place, may you go out with strength and faith. May you go out into the world, into the daylight, into abundant life to which God calls us. Go with hope and courage this day to the freedom of that life and go knowing that God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer abides with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.